Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know It All. So never a dull moment with Tesla. I just released a video this morning. I will link it at the end of this video. You should watch it. It's about how Legacy Auto is following Tesla's master plan backwards. I think it's quite an interesting little video. But anyway, as I was working out, I'm actually done with the gym today. So I'm on the back end of things. So sorry if I'm a bit sweaty. But as I was working out, I was looking into details about the uh, brand new not yet released to the public model wise that are coming out of Texas there. This is all speculation. So please take this all with a grain of salt. <laughs> Nobody except for people inside Tesla know the details of this for real, but I'm going to sort of give my thought process about this and why I think this is absolute genius. <laughs> so, so, okay, let's back up a little bit. When the Tesla Gigafactory in Texas was announced, there was an immediate like, oh, there's going to be a problem because you've got the older Model Ys, which is the one that I'm currently driving here, which has 2170 cells, uh, has a stamped rear casting, but not a stamped front casting, does not have structural battery pack, etc. This, by the way, gets 326 EPA rating when it was new. Of course, it's a little bit less than that now. I think it's 305 now. Anyway, um, but, and and maybe, I don't know, I haven't looked on the website recently, it's possible it's 328 now for the new ones, but whatever. So it's approximately 325 miles of range. That version of the car could be substantially worse than the new one coming out of Texas. And so the question was, how do you sell both of these? So when you're in... Um, when you're in you know, Europe or something, it makes perfect sense that you would want to get a car that's closer in because it's built in the country. You won't pay export tariffs. You won't pay the transportation fees. So there will be an obvious reason to purchase the made in Germany model wise over made in Fremont model wise or even made in Shanghai model wise. So there's a, an obvious reason why you would do that with that. The, the problem is in the United States, you've got two United States co uh, uh, factories that are producing these. So you could easily go like, no, 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 no. I want the one that's made in Texas. I don't want the one that's made in Fremont. And so Fremont could have a significant problem. People call it the Osborne effect. If you don't know, uh, there was a very famous <laughs> snafu in the early 1980s. The Osborne one computer was, was a pretty reasonable computer. But the problem is that, um, Oh gosh, was it David Osborne? It was a guy's you know, personal, like, you know, <laughs> it was back in the day when individuals kind of designed computers. But anyway, um, he announced, he said, oh, we've got this great model one Osborne, but there's a model, there's an Osborne two that's coming out and that's going to be even better. Just wait, it's going to be so awesome. Well, the problem was that that was, I think it was approximately eight or 10 months away or maybe a year or something. By the time that came out, nobody was buying the Osborne one anymore because they were like, oh, Osborne two, I'm going to wait for that. You know, I'll wait half a year or a year to buy a much better computer than the current one and Osborne went out of business. So <laughs> that was the consequence of it. So when people talk about the Osborne effect, that's what they're talking about. And the concern was that that's the same basic kind of thing you're going to get with Texas versus Fremont. Not necessarily that you're waiting for the future uh, because most people don't really understand all the ins and outs of all this stuff, right? We're inside of this bubble and we, we pay a lot of attention to this stuff. But that once kind of things got rolling, if you had two versions of this car that were effectively the same or potentially the Model Y coming out of Texas with the same amount of batteries and things like that could run a much longer distance. So maybe it had 350 or 60 miles as opposed to 325 miles that you would have an issue where you couldn't sell any Fremont cars anymore. And so that was a concern that people had. So it's not quite the Osborne effect, but it's similar to that. So what Tesla has done here is I think absolutely brilliant. I, I'm assuming Zach Kirkhorn had a hand in this, but, and again, this, none of this is real yet. None of the, this is not a for sale online. And by the way, if, um, if and when this comes out, let me know <laughs> because I'm going to try to be as early on the queue as possible to get a made in Texas Model Y now. Uh, I was planning on waiting for the Cybertruck, but I, I really want to apples to apples compare this because I've got a 2021 Fremont. It's actually made in December of 2020, but whatever. They call it a 2021. But this is a Fremont Model Y and I can get the Texas Model Y and I can drive them around and really see what what the you know the apples to apples comparison. But anyway, okay, so what have they done according to what we know? And that is that they have made a, a, a dual motor, so just like this one, but it's only got 279 miles of EPA rated range as opposed to 326 miles of EPA rated range. 
and what they've done. And, and it's only $3,000 approximately cheaper than the Made in Fremont Model Y. So they're very close to price parity, which means that you're going to bifurcate your market. There's going to be a segment of the market that's like, I need the extra range. I want this version. And you're also gonna have a segment of the market that's like kind of, I guess, more in the know, doesn't necessarily need the range, says, ooh, what I really, really want is I want the made in Texas structural battery pack, you know, the, 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 the 4680 battery cells, all of that kind of stuff. They're into that kind of thing. And so you've bifurcated your market and you don't have them competing with each other nearly as much as you would have otherwise. And with a price difference of only $3,000, a lot of people are gonna keep buying the Fremont main Model Y. Now, uh, I think it was 868, I haven't counted the batteries. Somebody counted the batteries at the display at uh, the Cyber Rodeo and came up with, I think it was 868. But anyway, that's how many batteries approximately are in the structural battery pack for the Made in Texas Model Y. And people have calculated that out. If it's the same chemistry as the 2170s that are in this car, that would give them somewhere around 68 to 70 kilowatt hours. This car has 75 approximately, I believe. Um, and so that kind of doesn't make sense. And so the other piece of this puzzle is that because it should have more than, with that amount of batteries, it should have more than 68 to 70 kilowatt hours of power. So there's a couple of possibilities. One is they've software limited for a period of time. So they wanna make sure um, that they are not, sorry, people are messaging me like crazy while I'm talking here. <laughs> Should put this in airplane mode before I go ahead and film things. But anyway, so what they're saying is that maybe what they've done is they've software limited it for a period of time to make it look like it's, they've kind of sandbagged the numbers. I, I tend to believe, again, this is totally speculation on my part, but my thought is that what they're looking at is an LFP or lithium iron phosphate, um, chemistry rather than the nickel and cobalt chemistry. The main reason why is because all of the LFP chemicals are much, much more available, much less expensive. Nickel is ridiculously expensive right now, hard to get a hold of. Cobalt, of course, and some manganese and things like that are from, it's not only expensive to get, but they're from very, uh, you know, humanitarian rights problematic areas. So Tesla, certainly in China, has moved away from the nickel cobalt versions of their battery chemistry. The problem with LFP is that it's less energy dense. So for the same amount of volume, right, of, of a battery, you have less energy per unit volume. And that sort of plays into the idea that with, this, with the amount of batteries that they have in the structural pack, that would reduce the amount of kilowatt hours that you would have so what you've got is a lithium iron phosphate thing. Again, don't have any evidence of this, but it makes really good logical sense that that's what they would do. These are easier materials to get a hold of. They're cheaper. They can produce them faster in their battery thing, they can, in their battery factory, the mini factory that's inside the main factory. They can do all of this stuff in a much more efficient manner without spending a ton of money on all of this other stuff having to go and mine all of these complex and expensive things to mine and they can save the the more expensive higher energy density chemistries for things like the Cybertruck, the Tesla Semi, and of course they're still producing the Model Ys in in Fremont which have that and I think the ones in Berlin right now are also with the nickel chemistry. So they're, again they're splitting up their market and if they have a shortage in one of these elements they can always shift production to the other factory. All of this stuff is brilliant but here's the ultimate brilliant part, okay? So you've bifurcated your market and you've got people who want the range and people who want the cool made in Texas Model Y. But what happens if you get a little bit more people who want the longer range, right? What you can do is you can reduce the price of the made in Texas Model Ys a bit because they're making, I think people are estimating 40% margins on the made in Texas Model Ys. I mean, it's an outrageous amount of, of profit that they're making. So you reduce a couple thousand dollars, you tweak that, you drive, you drive demand towards that version of the car. What if people go like, I want the made in Texas Model Y and I don't want the one in Fremont? Well, you either reduce the Fremont cost or more likely because they have a certain certain fixed cost. They're not as profitable as the Model Ys. You ramp the price up a thousand or two thousand dollars of the made in Texas Model Y. That drives demand over because if it's price parity, why would you not get the same, you know, the longer range one, right? So you drive demand over towards the Fremont one. So they've got these levers that they can just keep pushing back and 
and forth, back and forth, back and forth to balance this thing out. And I, again, like I said, I think Zach Kirkhorn, who's the um, master of coin or in traditional speak, the CFO, he this is absolutely brilliant, right? They've got this thing where they've got these huge profit margins. They don't really care, particularly whether one thing's $500 more or $500 less. They just keep adjusting these levers to keep the demand balanced between the two. In fact, in the short term, well, I guess they're ramping, but I was going to say if they ramp the Texas thing, the, the made in California uh, model Ys have such a huge wait time that if they can ramp the ones in Texas fast enough, they could actually try to drive some demand, you know, have people change over and switch from California to Texas versions. So that kind of stuff could be just fascinating to watch. So watch this space and see what happens. So again, it's going to take a while for Texas to ramp up, but you know, two or three or four months from now when they're producing a reasonable amount of cars out of that factory every week, look at what they do. You may see them like adjusting on a weekly basis. They may be making small changes to the amount of money that they're charging for each of these cars. It's an absolutely brilliant way to deal with an incredibly difficult problem, which is that you've got two different cars that have the same name that are coming out of two different factories. And you could easily have a complete imbalance where people just all flood towards one versus the other. But what they're doing here is they're, they're shifting this so they can try to keep the balance. Um, and by the way, when, if you, if you go like, Oh, 279 miles is not reasonable. That's not what I can do. Remember that if this is lithium iron phosphate, the 279, you can charge to hundred percent. I keep my car charged to 75% all the time. So I'm only charging to about 230, 235 miles on a regular basis. Now, obviously, if I go on a long road trip, I will charge it to 100% at superchargers. But the but the LFP chemistry is designed to charge to 100% and discharge to close to 0%. So you can use that entire window of, of charge. So it makes it at least unless you're going on long road trips a lot. And again, we can keep this car. If we get both of them, we can keep this one for doing the long road trips. And the other one, you can just, you don't ever have to worry about that. Oh, do I do 80% today or hundred percent? Just plug it in, charge it to hundred percent, let it drain down and it's fine. So the LFP chemistry is a much more robust chemistry. It's, it doesn't care nearly as much about how you charge it. It wants to be charged to hundred percent and drain. So again, watch this space when you see the first ones coming out of texas it right now it's only employees that have these so it's hard to know what's going on but as the first actual consumers get hold of these look and see what happens see if the recommendation is charged to 100 percent. if it is definitely lfp chemistry if it's saying charge it to 80 percent for daily driving then it's definitely the uh, older well older just different it's the nickel cobalt manganese etc chemistry so very interesting stuff but the main thing is these guys are brilliant. <laughs> They're going to be able to sit here and just, you know, on almost a real time basis, balance the demand between these two factories, which was a really intractable problem. They've solved the problem. Again, watch my other video from this morning. I think it's quite good. I'm sorry for my voice. I'm still recovering from Texas. Anyway, in the meantime, you know, please like and subscribe. I'll do that good stuff. If you enjoy the video, check out my link for Patreon in the description. And have a lovely Wednesday, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye bye.